Now, even while I am critical of our own side and the other side for, for greenlighting bad behavior simply in order to create a litmus test of loyalty against the other side, it is important to recognize that the left is threatening America's way of life. There are a bunch of things the left does that are really threatening to true morality. Here's an example. Chelsea Clinton, who is considered a moderate within the Democratic Party, she did an event the other night at which she talked about legalizing abortion, and she suggested that legalizing abortion was good because it had created economic growth. So killing babies, fun for profit. It is not a disconnected fact to Justice T-shirt of 1973 that American women entering the labor force from 1970 to 2009 added $3.5 trillion to our economy right? Like the net new entrance of women. That is not disconnected from the fact that Roe became the law of the land in January of 1973. I mean, once you kill babies, then women could go to work. I mean, doesn't that seem like a, a nice moral thing to do? You understand why people on the right are so anti-left, right? The reason is because of stuff like this. The moral equation that says, look, as soon as we could start killing children in the womb, suddenly women could work as like associate lawyers at law firms and put in 2,200 billable hours and we added a bunch of money to the economy. She's literally putting a price on children. It's so funny. Folks on the left will say that Marco Rubio puts a price, a price on children because he took money from the NRA. Okay, the Democrats literally put prices on children with comments like that. She literally said that the slaughter of legitimately a million babies a year in the United States for the last 30 years, right? Last 30, no, longer than that, last 45 years, the, that, the, kill, the mass killing of children, right? M tens of millions of children. It was worth it because like for each one of those kids, we made probably like a thousand bucks. And we probably made like, a, we probably made 10,000 bucks for each one of those dead kids. You wonder why the right is so solid in its support of President Trump. It's also because the left refuses to be reasonable on any of these issues. So as I say, as the outgroup threat multiplies, the in-group becomes more cohesive. Uh, and that's something that the left should recognize here. Now, meanwhile, the media have been doing yeoman's work to, to, demonstrate exactly where they stand on all of these issues. They've been continuously granting all sorts of credibility to Amarosa Manigault, who continues to make the rounds, even though everyone knows that she's sort of a pathological liar. That was her reputation when she was on The Apprentice. I, I believe she was fired a couple of times from the Clinton administration, three times on The Apprentice, and now from the White House. So she, that lady has been fired more often than, than a Bill Clinton cigar. I mean, she, she, has, been, she has been lit up like, like a Christmas tree. I mean, she's been fired just a bunch of times. Anyway, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, she makes the point that the press who are jumping on all the Omarosa stuff, they're doing a lot to divide the country, and she's not wrong about this. Frankly, if we want to look at who's creating divisions in the country, I think the media has done more to divide this country, certainly far more than this president ever has, by elevating uh, people like the author of this book, by focusing on uh, a sparsely attended rally instead of all of the policies that this administration and that this president are enacting. Okay, and she is correct about all of this. It is also important to note that Omarosa is saying stuff that is completely unverified. Like she suggested that Trump's pastor, I can't remember her name, Patty White, I think, uh, that she was having an affair with Trump in the book. She just sort of suggests that out of the blue. And then she says that Trump knew all about the WikiLeaks emails before they were actually revealed, which would, in fact, implicate President Trump in the hacking and also in direct conspiracy with the Russian government. Here's Omarosa saying this, again, with no supporting evidence, and this was parroted all over the place by the media yesterday. Did Donald Trump know about those emails before they came out? Absolutely. He knew about them? Yes. He knew what was coming out before WikiLeaks yes. released them? You're saying Donald Trump had a back channel. <laughs> I didn't say that. You did. But I will say that How do you I am going to him, expose then? the corruption that went on in the campaign and in the White House. I'm going to continue to blow the whistle on all of that. OK, so she says she spoke to Mueller about all of this. If that's really the case, if there was any evidence of that, then we'll find out in the Mueller investigation. But if you believe Omarosa on this, then I think you got to screw loose. I mean, she's she's insanely dishonest. But the media are treating her as though everything she says is gospel truth. And also the media are going overboard by suggesting that everything that President Trump does is equally bad. So, for example, the president called Omarosa a dog because he said that she was basically fired like a dog, which, as we discussed yesterday, is one of his favorite turns of phrase. He has said that half the United States has been fired like a dog. Right? It's just his favorite thing to say. The media declared yesterday that this was the worst thing anyone had ever said. Joe Scarborough, who gave President Trump millions and millions of free ad dollars on MSNBC during the presidential run before turning on him and deciding that Trump was actually a bad guy. He says that Trump opened the door to genocide by calling Omarosa a dog. Yes, I'm, yes, right on the money there, Joe. I'm, I'm not an exaggeration. Any, oh my goodness. During the Holocaust, Nazis referred to Jews as rats. Uh, in Rwanda, 
uh, genocide was often justified uh, with the calling Tutsis cockroaches, slave owners throughout history, considered slaves subhuman animals. But you can see time and time again, and I'll, I'll go to Alicia here, uh, this is actually how dictators and tyrants open the door, and they do it by dehumanizing their political opponents. Yes, the Holocaust is right around the corner because Amarosa Manigault taped President Trump in the Oval Office and then Trump called her a dog and said she was be fired like a dog. That's exactly the same as the Nazis spending years and years labeling all Jews rats. And it's the same thing as the government in Rwanda labeling the Tutsis cockroaches. Exactly the same thing, right on the money media. I can't imagine why people don't trust you on any of this stuff, but this brings up the other big story of yesterday, and that, of course, is the controversy over the N-word. Okay, the controversy over the N-word. So, this uh, Amarosa Mangold suggested that there was a tape of President Trump saying the N-word. This had been long rumored, that there was an apprentice tape in which the president dropped the N-word. Now, I should say that if the president did, in fact, drop the N-word and, and drop it in a, in a you know, specifically derogatory fashion. Obviously, he's not doing like the Michael Scott, Chris Rock routine from The Office where he just is repeating a comedy routine uh, or he's rapping lyrics or something. If the president says, you know, those stupid N words or he if he says anything like that, then I think a primary is probably in order in the Republican Party. But there's no evidence that any of this happened. Right. Because if that tape existed, do you think that might have come out by now? It was a long rumor during the 2016 campaign that tape if that tape exists, that sucker is in the public sphere by now. No question about it. But there, there's a problem inside the White House, and that is you can't say anything without President Trump's prior approval. There's a problem within the comms team over at the White House. The problem is if you make a reasonable assumption, it may not be reasonable in light of what President Trump wants you to say. So if Dana Perino, who's the press secretary under George W. Bush, had been asked, is there a tape of President Bush saying the N-word? Dana Perino would have just said no. Right? No, there's not. And then if it had come out there was, she would have been shocked and horrified. Sarah Huckabee Sanders is asked about this, and here's what she said, and this, of course, was the, the statement that generated a 1,000 headlines yesterday. Can you stand at the podium and guarantee the American people they'll never hear Donald Trump utter the N-word on a recording in any context? Uh, I can't guarantee uh, anything, but I can tell you that the president addressed this question directly. I can tell you that I've never heard it. Okay, so... That is not a great response from Sarah Huckabee Sanders, right? You'd want her to just say no, or she could theoretically just read Trump's tweet because Trump tweeted it out. The problem is that if you're, it, it, she has the worst job in America. Being, being the press secretary for President Trump is very difficult because if you say something that is reasonable, like, no, he didn't, Trump could call you into his office and say, you know, I didn't, but I just want to troll the other side. Like th there could be a thousand reasons why President Trump doesn't like what you say. So Sarah Huckabee Sanders is obviously going to avoid implicating any hard answer here even though a hard answer would be better. Because like, really, what's the downside? If she says no, and then it turns out that the tape breaks, so what? Like, so what? What are they going to say? That she's a liar? They're already saying she's a liar. They're going to say that the, the, the administration was dishonest? Like, okay. I, what, what exactly is the downside? But the fact that the media have jumped on the N-word stuff without a shred of evidence that this has actually happened is pretty astonishing. It really is. I mean, again, we have not a shred of evidence that Trump has used the N-word. The man's been public for 30, 40 years, 50 years probably of his career. There's no evidence that he's ever used the N-word. Right? The people who, who Omarosa is quoting say that he never used the N-word. And, and there was a tape they played on CBS, Omarosa talking to a couple of other campaign staffers like Katrina Pearson and Katrina Pearson saying, he said it, he said it. Well, just because Katrina Pearson said Trump said something, I mean, that's like if somebody was having a conversation with me and they said, you know, there's a rumor out there that President Trump stripped a donkey down in Mexico one day, right? I would probably be like, yeah, maybe, right? Because <laughs> like, who, who, the, who the hell knows, right? Like the answer is he didn't, of course. But when you're in a conversation with people, you just sort of say stuff. So, that, so using that as evidence that there actually is an N-word tape is just evidence the media is willing to go out of its way for anything. Remember, these are the same folks, exactly the same folks, who said that Linda Tripp was the worst person who ever lived for having taped Monica Lewinsky talking about an affair in the Oval Office with Bill Clinton. So taping was bad when it was about Bill Clinton, and we should tear to Linda Tripp a new one, and we shouldn't take her seriously, and she was a liar. But Omarosa Manigault, a proven liar over and over and over, a turncoat politically about 80,000 different ways, right? We should definitely believe her when she says that there's an outstanding N-word tape for the president of the United States. And as I said yesterday, if there is an N-word tape, it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem in a variety of senses. It, it, obviously, the president of the United States should not be somebody who utters the N-word 
The, the Republican Party, the party of Abraham Lincoln, should not be the party of the N-word. But there's no evidence Trump said any of this. So what the hell are we even talking about? The only reason we're talking about this is because the media have decided to grant additional credibility to a woman who has none. And that is a serious problem with the media and their own credibility and demonstrates full scale what their agenda is in, in all of this.